My name is Matthias, and today I'm going to go over right bundle branch blocks and how they appear on the precordial leads of an EKG. I'm going to begin with a visual animation of a heart that's depolarizing. I'm then going to connect this animation with an EKG and demonstrate how the depolarization can be used to predict the appearance on an EKG, and vice versa, how an EKG can be used to predict the depolarization within the heart, and from that, how the pathology can be extrapolated. Before we begin, we should review right bundle branch blocks. In a right bundle branch block, the right fascicle does not conduct to the right ventricle. Instead, depolarization moves from the AV node through the bundle of His and to the left ventricle. The left ventricle then depolarizes and electricity spreads through the intercalated discs to the right ventricle. In effect, the left ventricle will depolarize before the right ventricle. Okay. I've included at the bottom the appearance of a normal V1 on the bottom left, right next to the V1 in a right bundle branch block, with the classic rabbit ears. On the right, I've included a normal V6, right next to the V6 in a right bundle branch block. And on the far right, I've included a diagram of the precordial leads as a reminder, with V1 through V6, and this is going to be looking at the horizontal plane of the heart. Okay. Before we begin the animation, it's important we get ourselves oriented. So this image on the left, that man represents our perspective. So it's there in almost all of the animations to represent our orientation of anterior and posterior. So whichever way the image of the man is facing, that is anterior, okay? In the center of the screen is a 3D model of a heart. We were looking from the anterior side and you can see the side is opened up and you can see the right ventricle on the front and the left ventricle in the back. This is akin to how it's oriented in the body with the right ventricle anterior to the left ventricle. So when this animation starts, depolarization will be represented by a green color. And when we begin, you'll see depolarization move through the interventricular septum, demonstrated here in the center, to the left ventricle in the back and then to the right ventricle. So we'll go ahead and start this animation. You can see it moving down the interventricular septum, through the left ventricle, then to the right ventricle. Alright, at this point the animation is going to change perspectives. We'll rotate around the side of the heart, and then to the top of the heart. As it does this, we'll be adding a horizontal plane. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the animation just to reorient ourselves. At this point, we're looking from the top down onto the heart, and we're looking at a horizontal plane. So you can see here, this is the heart and one horizontal slice of it. In the center here, denoted by a small ridge, it's slightly difficult to see on this um, image, is the interventricular septum. You can see the image of the person over here making this anterior and this posterior, with the leads being V1 through V6, V6 coming from the lateral side. All right, we'll go ahead and continue this animation. And you can see that for the beginning, we're going to zoom in on the V1 lead. And we're going to begin discussing how V1 is corresponding to what we're witnessing with the depolarization of the heart. Okay, so... The V1 lead, the EKG, I've demonstrated here at the top. It's the classic bunny ears, where it's a slight upward peak with one large downward peak and one large upward peak. Okay, so it's important to note that the perspective we're looking at this from is from the V1 lead. So this dashed white line is in essence what that V1 lead is going to witness. Where anything moving towards the V1 lead is an upward spike, and anything moving away from the, v the V1 lead is a downward spike. Now, on top is the right ventricle, on the bottom is the left ventricle. The right ventricle, remember, is more anterior, as noted by the animation of the man, and the left ventricle is more posterior. And so we're going to look at the EKG, and we're going to predict, using the EKG, what we're going to witness when we look at the depolarization. So the EKG has a small upward spike. This represents the slight rightward 
uh, depolarization of the interventricular septum. Then it immediately goes to a large downward spike. That downward spike tells us the depolarization, the net depolarization, is away from V1. So if we're thinking about the heart, if we start at the septum and we move away from V1, that means we go to the left ventricle first. Okay, we can see that there's a huge depolarization there where the left ventricle is depolarizing. Then, after a bit, we see an opposite change in the direction where now it's depolarizing upwards on the EKG. That corresponds to depolarization towards the V1. That's important because what this EKG tells us is we moved away from V1, then towards V1. And if we know we start at the septum, that means the first thing we did is we went towards the left ventricle and then towards the right ventricle. Now, if we think pathologically, the only time that would happen is if there is a right bundle branch block, because that's the only time that the right ventricle is going to depolarize immediately after the left ventricle. So if we play this animation, we'll be able to see that depolarization with the color of green. So you can see here the green starts at the septum, moves to the left ventricle, and then the right ventricle. And now we can isolate those two. So if we take a look at just the downward spike, and we look at that. See here, on the downward spike, moves down, and the peak on the EKG corresponds to the time in which the depolarization is moving away from V1, and that's really important. Now if we look at the upward spike, from here, this time course is going to correspond to when the depolarization is moving towards V1. We can see that here. Okay, so if we look at our EKG, and we look at the directions of the depolarizations, that gives us a clue of how electricity is passing through the heart. Then the only thing we need to know is what each one of these leads is looking at. So V1, as a benchmark, looks primarily towards the right ventricle. It's going to look at the right ventricle, towards the septum, and then through the left ventricle. So when things move uh, upwards on the EKG, that means they're moving towards V1, likely through the right ventricle. When they move downwards on the EKG, they're moving away from V1 likely through the left ventricle. Or at any point, if electricity is moving away from V1, it's going to be a downward spike. Okay, so now let's take a look at the next orientation. And so we're gonna move from V1, and we're going to move and look at V6. So V6, remember, is looking most laterally at the heart. And so this is going to primarily see the left ventricle, okay? So again, here in the center, we have our interventricular septum. And in this case, V6 is going to witness electricity moving along this dotted axis. Now, if we look at the EKG, we see that initially there's a large upward spike. And from last time, we know that a large upward spike corresponds to electricity moving towards the lead. Okay, so in this case, using the EKG, we can predict that the electricity is moving through the left ventricle first. And then the second bit of the EKG is a downward spike. Using that, we can predict that the electricity is moving away from the V6 lead. And using that, we can predict it's moving through the right ventricle. Okay, so if we take a look at this depolarization, just like we did last time, we can see it starts in the interventricular septum, moves to the right ventricle, or left ventricle, excuse me, and then through the right ventricle. Okay, and so you can see that depolarization. We can isolate each one of those. Again, if we look at the upward spike, that's gonna to correspond to electricity moving towards V6 see here, upward spike, and it's moving towards V6 indeed. And then if we look, it's going to be at this inflection point, so here, and as we look at the next one, we're going to see that it's now moving away from V6. Okay. So using this method of looking at the EKG and looking at our electrodes and where they're placed, you can predict where electricity is moving throughout the heart. Again, if it's moving upwards, it's moving towards that lead, and it's moving downwards and moving away from that lead. And any electrical path is going to do this. So I'm briefly going to mention, I didn't have time to animate it, but in example, the left bundle branch block. In the left bundle branch block, I'm gonna clear the, I'm gonna clear all the drawings on the screen. In a left bundle branch block, from V6, the EKG looks like this. Okay, and that's because in a left bundle branch block, electricity moves out like this, moves through the right ventricle, and then moves out through all of the left ventricle. Okay, so what happens is 
you'll get a very small downward spike that sometimes is not visible on the EKG. And that downward spike corresponds to this very minuscule amount of tissue of the bundle of his moving, or the uh, bundle of his moving down the interventricular septum through the right fascicle and then through the right ventricle. But notice that the right ventricle starts distally. It starts distally and then moves towards the left ventricle, which means that the net depolarization is always towards V6. So if the net depolarization is all to always towards V6, then it's always going to be an upward spike on the EKG. This is why when we look at a left bundle branch block in the position of V6, we primarily see an upward spike. And that's because the depolarization, even though it starts in the right ventricle, the vector or the net direction of depolarization is towards the left ventricle. And as long as the depolarization is moving towards the left ventricle, it's going to be an upward spike on the EKG. Okay. Hopefully, this was helpful in visualizing how depolarizations in the, in the heart correspond to what's being visualized on an EKG. And should a problem present itself when we're looking at EKG, think about the anatomy of the heart and what it means to have a depolarization. If you need, draw yourself a picture. And then take that and uh, extrapolate how a pathology of the heart could result in depolarization patterns that are seen on the EKG. Wish you all the best of luck with your studies, and if I don't see you, I hope you all have a wonderful break.